guys, I'm Trina and this is my review over the Winners Trilogy by Marie Rutkowski. The books in this trilogy, in order along with what my individual ratings of them were, are The Winner's Curse, which I gave 5 stars, The Winner's Crime, which I gave 3 stars, and The Winner's Kiss, which I gave 2 stars. So you can see that I really love the first book and the series kind of went downhill from there for me, just my opinion. So that's the tone you're going to get from this review. This is not a gush. However, I don't hate the series, so it's also not a rant. So the structure of this review is going to be listed down below along with timestamps in case you want to jump around to any of the specific sections. But I'm going to start out by giving you a summary of what the series is about. Then I'll tell you my spoiler free review and then I will move into a spoiler section towards the end of this video. I will give you ample warning on where the spoilers begin. So what is this series about? I hear a lot of people saying that this is about a main character who when she hits a certain age the choice that she has in this society is that she can either get married or she can join the army and while that is a really good description of what happens in book one that's not what the overall series is about this is about a world in which three nations have found themselves locked into this war throughout the course of history and we are following the daughter of a general from one nation and a guy from another nation and they have an attraction to each other. So there is a pretty heavy Starcross love theme. And if you would like to know what each individual book is about, I'll give you some really quick one sentence summaries. Book one is very much about Starcross love and forbidden romance. Book two is much more about spies and royal court intrigue. And book three is basically all out war. So, my spoiler free review, let me start with the things that I liked about the series overall. I did really like the romance. I would describe this romance as a slow burn and as a hate to love relationship. Another thing that I really liked are the characters. I was very invested in them, especially in the main character Kestrel. And for her being the daughter of a general, Kestrel is not known for having great combat skills, but instead she is valued for her mind. She's a really sharp wit, she's really great at war strategy. And I really just loved seeing a story that did focus on the importance of brains and intelligence. That was something that I really enjoyed. On the other hand, the other main character, Aaron, he's a very passionate and at times very dangerous character. So the two of them really played off of each other very well. Being invested in them was the number one reason why I wanted to see the series through to the end, even throughout the things that I didn't really like as much. Another really great thing that I loved about this series was the rich background that Rukowski gave these fictional nations and these characters. This world did feel very fleshed out and very diverse. Now as for what I didn't like about the series overall, I felt like the pacing was very slow at times. Even when I loved what was going on, there were still scenes in between the moments that I loved where I did feel it was kind of slowly paced. And probably the biggest thing that I disliked about the series overall is that Marie Rutkowski has a tendency to really quickly sweep her plot twists under the rug and cover them up and they turn out to be no big deal. Something that really propelled me through the series is that the first two books do end on cliffhangers and I would get so excited about, oh my gosh, this has really changed the whole game, everything is going to be ruined now, and I would get into the next book and realize, oh, this really isn't as big of a deal as it kind of made it out to be. I definitely feel like Rutkowski knew how to build the tension but not really follow through on it. At least that was the experience that I had. I did have a couple of questions from Twitter that I want to address too. I had somebody ask me about the writing. How is the author's writing? Is it easy to get into or is it a difficult read? It definitely is not a difficult read. I do feel like the writing is easy to get into, easy to comprehend. I do hear a lot of readers describing the writing of this series as very beautiful, very descriptive and flowery. However, I never saw that. Nothing ever jumped out at me about the writing in these books that made me think, wow, that is exceptionally beautiful. Maybe I just am not aware of what other people describe as being flowery writing, but there are books that I consider to be very flowery and this just wasn't on the same level as those. So I don't know. I missed it. Maybe you wouldn't. I can really only speak for The Winner's Kiss on this because it's the most recent one I read. But in The Winner's Kiss, a lot of the sentences were very short, very basic. I just feel like it was very simplistic writing in my opinion. 
And another question that I had was, what was my favorite book and why? My favorite book in this series was the first one, The Winner's Curse. Like I said before, I really love that slow burn romance, which is what we're introduced to in the first book. I did think it was a great setup for the series. So book one was my favorite. And now I do want to move into more specifics of each individual book. So this is the spoiler section, and if you have not read the series, you probably are not going to want to stick around unless you just don't care if you get spoiled, but I'll put the book covers up here as I talk about them so you can see exactly where I'm at. If you haven't read that book yet, you will want to leave. So book one, The Winner's Curse. I don't have much more to say about it that I haven't already covered in the spoiler-free section. I really loved the romance. It, I did find it to be a slow burn, forbidden love kind of thing, and that was really compelling. I really wanted to know the outcomes of these characters. The only negative thing I could say about the first book is that I did go back and reread my original review on it, and even though I gave it five stars, I did note in that review that I found it slow at times. So the pacing and the slowness of the plot ultimately were what gave me lower ratings in the last two books. So it was interesting to me to see that it was something I had seen from the very first book. It's good to know that I was consistent with what I was feeling about the series. So as for book two, the winner's crime spoilers for this one. I really loved the whole spy thing about this one. I loved that Kestrel was a spy. But what I didn't like so much about book two is that this entire book, I felt like screaming at Kestrel and Aaron to just use your words because they were miscommunicating the entire book. They were so stubborn and prideful throughout this entire book that they would be like, well, he looked at me the wrong way earlier, so I'm not going to talk to him right now. They were just very frustrating in book two. I really, really disliked it. I guess what I had expected from that first book's cliffhanger ending where Kestrel goes to the Emperor and says, hey, I will marry your son for peace or whatever. I guess I was expecting that to be a much bigger hindrance. And then I got into book two and I realized, oh, well, there's a lot of time before this marriage and Aaron is still around. It wasn't as big of a roadblock as I was expecting, which really lowered the stakes for me. Again, book two ended on a cliffhanger that got me really excited. Finally, here's a real game changer. Kestrel's being shipped off to a prison camp. So what's going to happen? What is this going to mean? Are they ever going to see each other again? Is he ever going to know that she was the moth? And I really, really wanted to know those things going into book three. So now to move into my likes and dislikes for book three. Like I said, I was very interested in this whole idea of Kestrel being sent out to the sulfur mines. And chapter two, which was her experience in the mines, was so intense and heartbreaking. That was a great chapter because I just felt so terrible for her what she was going through but she's broken out of the prison by chapter 9 so that didn't last very long at all although I did really like how he infiltrated the prison and then there was a survival aspect to them getting back through the tundra which is something that I always like I love a good survival aspect to a story so I did really enjoy the progression of that but it also felt very quickly done I guess to prolong the feeling of the two of them still continuing to miscommunicate and not really know the truths about each other, Rutkowski then writes in that Kestrel has amnesia after being at the work camp for only one month. But again, this is reversed as soon as possible. Kestrel suddenly starts getting her memories back without ever really working towards getting them. I really did not enjoy the amnesia aspect to the plot. It felt like a very cheap plot device, very contrived. And then the last half or maybe third of the book is spent with Aaron, Roshar, and Kestrel sitting around a table and discussing battle strategy and I felt like that was too much. Like I wanted to see the battles in action. I didn't want to hear the strategy behind it. And then when we got to see the battles in action, they were constantly broken up with paragraph breaks, which for me, that pauses the rhythm of reading. I wanted to know what was going to happen next. And instead, we were getting break after break after break as the scenes switched between Aaron and Kestrel. And that just kept taking me out of the action time and time again. And besides the paragraph breaks, I did find that the writing in this book itself was a very choppy rhythm. I've got an example here to tell you guys. This is from the very beginning of the book. Now he saw the fear. She saw him see it. He stopped his horse. Her horse stopped too. He reached to touch her. She flinched away. Kestrel. That's, that's so choppy. I really, really had trouble getting into this last book because of the writing, the pauses, the breaks, the endless strategy, the battles, and I just, I didn't find it very exciting. I didn't find that it had very high stakes, and so for me, 
I found myself bored every time I picked the book up. I didn't want to be reading it. And that's despite having really wanted to read this book. I was in the mood for this book and for this world when I picked it up. I guess the only good thing that I could say about it is that this book really took its time working out that resolution and showing you how it came to be. It did really feel deserved because we spent so much time watching these characters fight for it. But that doesn't mean that I was gripped or that I enjoyed it the entire time. For me, two stars just means that there was more I disliked about the book than I liked about it. And I don't feel like giving this book a low rating makes me like that first book any less. I really loved book one. I will continue to keep loving it and look back on it as being a favorite. It had a lot of things I really liked. If you're disappointed by me giving this one two stars, trust me, I am more disappointed in that because this was a series that I really loved and I wanted to love the whole thing. So that is all I really have to say about this series. If you've read it, I would love to hear what you thought. If you didn't like any of the same things that I didn't like, please let me know that because I've heard like next to no negative reviews, especially for the finale. And if you loved it, let me know why. I can definitely see the appeal of this series. I'm just saying like let's discuss it because I would like to further the conversation. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the comments. Bye!